It was very emotional to work through these pieces. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, but I used all of my immigration related documents um, in various phases of the work. So the paper that you see, um, for example, the paper itself that the piece is on is actually handmade. It's paper that I made from my DACA application documents that I turned into a pulp and used to make the paper that I then collaged more of my documents. Um, and I think I just wanted to, one, make use of all of the papers that I've accumulated, um, but also use them to kind of express how I feel about just the process of applying to DACA every two years and what it's like to have to sit with all of these documents. It's beautiful how you use documents, DACA documents, to create something new that's so artistic. Um, you keep that as a reminder, right? Like a memento where you can always remember um, being undocumented. I actually wanted to use them to get rid of them. Oh. I actually hate that I have to collect them and I, I hate that I have to go through this process every two years. Um, and I think that a lot of us may actually feel that way about all of these documents, but we just are not allowed to rip up our legal documents, right? Are not, are told to take care of them, are told to protect them um, because it protects us. Um, but there's just such a, there's such a way in which their existence in our life um, is a point of both privilege and powerlessness. And so I think for me, it was really important to, to grapple with those feelings. Um, and, you know, I can't rip up the originals. So being able to work with photocopies um, has been just a really powerful way to get to do that in, in, in a way. That's really awesome how you inverted the purpose of documents, court documents, DACA documents, to create something that's not necessarily beautiful, but impactful and still personal towards yourself. Um, I think there's a lot of pain, as you described, that you went through, and it's really difficult to open yourself up and be vulnerable through your art. So I really appreciate that. And you really did a phenomenal job. My name is Denise Guadalupe Romero Gonzalez. My friends know me as Lupita, and I am from Mexico. I came here when I was eight years old. My pronouns are she, hers, they, them, and I've had many professions. I have been a community organizer, an educator, facilitator. I am a legal worker right now, and I'm an artist. Sharing these pieces, especially the ones around my status, um, the way it has connected with my family who's dealt with deportations, I can sense just how much sharing my experience is also sharing their experience. And so that's been very transformative, very deep. And I think there's two different kinds of joys. There's joy that is just pure happiness. And then there's a joy that you can only gain moving through the pain. And I think that that's the kind of joy that I'm more interested in, is the, the joy that you experience when you're doing something really difficult, when you're showing something very vulnerable. Because I think that there's so much more intimacy to that kind of joy. And, and art has, has really allowed me to access that in a way that I've never been able to before. So these are some of my poetry that I'll be sharing with you. It's about AAPI hate, undocumented identities, and yeah. The first poem will be, who will be our heroes? Who will be our heroes when the world fosters illness of the mind and body and plagues our cities, bloodshed in the absence of ritual? Who will be our heroes 
when our smiles are concealed under our armors and our precious limited laughs muffled and our dreams are like diamonds but crumble under the pressure, its ashes scattered with the rest, who will be our heroes when our grandparents are beaten for their yellow skin, when our women are stalked on sight, when our men are emasculated and humiliated, who will be our heroes when the blue guardians forsake us? Who will be our heroes? We are the marked ones, the martyrs of history's blemish, slaughtered lambs glistening in glory and innocence. How we fight and sing ba, helpless in our flock, ba, ba, ba. Hi, I'm Woo Jung Diana Park. My pronouns are she, her. I'm from South Korea. I'm a DACA recipient. I work as an immigrant justice organizer and poet activist at Minkwan Center for Community Action. I've always loved the power of words and how words can really spark change and momentum. And with spoken word, I see, I see it the same way. Spoken word is so powerful. And though everyone might not be a huge fan of poetry, there's still a beauty behind everyone's truth, everyone's story. And that's why I really love that I am a, I am a poet activist and I can really share my story. Some other themes in my poetry include loss, yearning, family, culture, all the reminders of home that I still want to be a part of, take a part of. But when I channel that spoken word, it becomes like I'm a part of my lost connection that isn't truly lost. It's a reminder that I am still connected through all these elements that remind me of home. My favorite one is this piece right here. Can you explain a little bit more about what inspired you about this piece? Um, yeah, I, this piece is both illustration and collage. Um, I made that illustration when protesters were fighting for citizenship for all 11 millions or for DACA to be expanded to more youth than is currently covered, as well as like the parents of DACA recipients. And so I remember during this time, um, Nancy Pelosi was going around uh, doing press conferences, talking about her um, passion for helping DACA recipients and for um, doing stuff for us when it was actually very clear that the Democratic Party as a whole wasn't going to pass citizenship, wasn't going to extend DACA, wasn't going to extend it to our parents. Um, and on top of that, th they are actively deporting millions of immigrants in the U.S. And so um, at the time of these protests, when some DACA recipients were showing up to her press conferences to essentially bring attention to her lying to the public about um, her advocacy for the immigrant community, it was around the same time that I was getting approval letters for my DACA. It was very important to me at the time to show up for the rest of my family and the rest of our community that isn't getting these protections. And when I receive my DACA approval letters, I know that it's going to bring two more years of stability for me but it also makes me very angry that other people don't get to have that. And so I thought it was very important for me to, um, to show that solidarity. And I think using documents like the approval letter and you know the manila folders that we put our documents in, for example, I just wanted to show that um, even though that's my reality, I still very much think about um, the rest of us that, that don't have that. Um, so um, I, I worked, that was my first illustration I ever made in general. So I did work on it for a couple of weeks and, um, and it kind of all came together that way. I feel that art is such an accessible way for people to understand many different issues. And so, especially in my youth programming, art 
was something, whether it was researching artists, looking at different artists' work that spoke to the systems of oppressions we were learning about, or just the community issues we were we were talking about, organizing around, um, finding ways to bring art into it, um, really allows for just more organic conversations. And I think people, I think young people really take well to art. I think that I'll always have that in the back of my head, that art is educational. Um, whether we want it to be or not, people take something away from art. And now when I pursue my art, I still have that educational part of me where I know that I'm teaching people about me. I'm teaching people about how I see the world when I'm presenting my art to them. And so I, I am very aware that it's all educational. We, we learn from everything around us. Um, so that's the way that I want to keep approaching it. I really want to bring what I experienced through art, the healing and the joy that I've experienced through art to young people. And so I really hope that I can pursue a career in art education, um, art therapy, uh, or just in general, art that is for the community and by the community. One of the other things that I really love to capture is my community as a whole. Um, so like this one and that one over there, um, those are kind of capturing portraits of people in my community. Um, you know, like aunties in Jackson Heights drinking chai and the jornaleros. Um, in my neighborhood that eat their lunch, like on the sidewalks, um, my friends. And I was part of a danza folklorico and, uh, and the ceremony of smoking um, coal and smoking sage while we dance is, is very important in our community. So I, I have been having a lot of fun also capturing people in my neighborhood, people in my community and my family, um, and just taking their portrait because it just is such a big part of my life, um, the neighborhood that I'm in. Thank you so much, Lupita, for sharing your work. Um, this has really affected me um, as an undocumented person. Um, I just really appreciate that you're showing your vulnerabilities and that you're allowing other people to see your truth and nobody can take that away from you. So thank you again. Thank you. No, I really appreciate everything you had to say about them. And, and it has been really rewarding to see, to share this with my community and to share this with other DACA recipients, for sure. The second poem is Harsuita Si Se Puede. We move at dawn, indignant, restless spirits. The souls on our feet are mercilessly calloused. Yet we rally our hearts, our minds, our voices. I do not know your name and you do not know mine. Today I cherish you and your neighbors. Our voices hoarse from battle cries, the heat beating us down. Si se puede, si se puede, harsuita, harsuita. We can do it, we can do it, we. The silenced and marginalized are gathered today to organize our muffled cries into a tsunami that cleanses our injustices. I watch in awe of the righteous bodies busily marching. I am strengthened by the brave young women and men brazenly shaving their heads, shouting, citizenship or buzz, citizenship or buzz. How you suffer like me, our pain, our solidarity. I love you more for your immigrant skin. The last poem is Know Your Roots. Mother Earth birds a single seed. Plant a seed and it will flourish. A dry seed soaks the water of the moist soil. Water, water, water. The seed's thirst is quenched. A root appears first. Water, water, water. The roots are deep within the soil. The plant continues to grow and grow. Some days the plant sways, bends, and snaps, but the roots are steady and balanced. The roots are the soul of the plant. The flower, the plant, and the vegetation are incomparable to the beauty of the roots. The plant buds with the firm resolve to live and drink. Water, water, water. 
Know your roots and you will discover your soul. Seek the recollection of days. Your origin began with the sun rays that hugged your once feeble body, the raindrops and menacing hurricane winds. Know your roots. Um, it's so weird how we like have never met before, but I a lot of the imagery that you put in your poetry is imagery that I, I've held for the last two years, um, especially during the pandemic with all of the AAPI hate that was going on in the city um, and the protest, uh, the one about the protest, just how much I, I've been there and we weren't there together and we don't know each other, but um, I can, I feel like I can really see through your eyes um, the images that you put together through your poetry. Uh, and it, it really sp speaks to what I've lived in the last couple of years and what I've witnessed other people live. Um, there's a way in which there's some, I wouldn't say positivity, but there's definitely beauty in some of the images that you choose to focus on. I don't get a sense of dismay from your poetry, which I think is the best part of poetry, right? That it it really allows you to see your pain, read your pain, but see the beauty in that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your input, um, especially about there being so much commonality between us and our arts. And even though it's different forms of art, uh, we still have so many themes that we resonate with. Nature, family, um, pain, solidarity, um, home. I think it's just amazing to see another artist's work and how uh, we aren't so different after all. And like you said, like we haven't met, but we're more similar than we've realized before. And it's true that um, language is so important in my uh, poetry. And sometimes it's about listening to the real message of the different language because at the end of the day, we're all fighting for the same things and we have solidarity amongst ourselves and we don't even realize it. So I just want people to listen more. So thank you so much for your input. No, absolutely. I love that. <laughs>